All right. So let us see how to make ratio complex questions very easy to solve. We'll do it under one minute. Just try to understand the trick. Let's have a look at the question. So, three-fifths of a certain class left on a field trip. One-third of the students who stayed behind did not want to go on the field trip. When another vehicle was located, half of the students who did want to go but had been left behind were able to join. So, what he asked, what fraction of the class ended up going on the field trip? Alright guys, so focus on the numbers. Three-fifths of a certain class. Further, one-third of some remaining. And further, half of the further remaining. So guys, the idea is very simple. You just have to assume the total number of students such that every fraction, 3 by 5, 1 by 3, 1 by 2, becomes an easy number. And how to do that? Focus on the denominators of the fraction, 5, 3, and 2. And all these fractions are related to a total number of students. So guys, let us assume the total number of students as 5 into 3 into 2, the product of the denominators, and see how it helps you. 5 into 3 into 2 becomes 30. Now if I assume the total number of students to be 30, the calculation is going to be very simple and you can solve the question under one minute. Have a look. 30 students. Three-fifths of these students left on the field trip. Three-fifths of 30 means nothing. Cancels out by 6, 18. So guys, out of 30 students, 18 left. So the people left behind are 12. Now one-third of the students who were left behind. So how many were left behind? 12. So one-third of these, nothing but 4. So 4 did not want to join. So how many want to join? 8. Further, when another vehicle was located, half of the students who did want to go on the field trip but had been left behind, that means these 8, were able to join. So half of them were able to join. So half of them, that means 4 were able to join but 4 still left behind. So see how simple we made the calculation because we knew three-fifths of some students, one-third of some students, half of some students. So that is going to be very beneficial for us to assume the total number of students like this. Now, how many students ended up going? 18 went and four of these. So how many people went? 22, 18 plus 4. So of course, total are 30, left behind 8. What fraction we need? What fraction of the class ended up going? So how many people ended up going? 22 of 30. So it's nothing but 11 by 15. Let's have a look at the answer choices. And that's there, option C. Now guys, I'm explaining you. It might have taken time because I was explaining you. You can do it in under 30 seconds. See how. 5, 3 is a 15, 2 is a 30. Total students, 30, 3 fifths went to the trip. That means 18. Left behind, 12. Further, out of this, one third did not want to go. That means one third did not want to go. So eight want to go. Then half of the students who did want to go but left behind were able to join. That means half of this, four were able to join. Four not. And they already have gone. So 22 gone. Total 30, 11 by 15. Just this much. 30 seconds, you're done with a complex ratio question. That's how you tackle GMAT. Let's have a look at another example and it will be more clear. Right now you assumed 30 because we have 5 into 3 into 2. Every time it was 3 fifths of some students, 1 third of remaining students, 1 second of remaining students. So it was in a single chain. Let's have a look at a different question where you will have two chains. So let's look at this question. A lemonade stand sold only small and large cup of lemonade. Alright, so he's selling small and large cups of lemonade. Three-fifths of the cups sold were small. So this is the number of cups sold. Right? If the large cups were sold at 7-6 as much as the small cups. So this 7 by 6 is related to price. 
whereas this 3 by 5 was related to number. Now, what fraction of Tuesdays total revenue was from the sale of large cups? Let's make the simple flowchart. What's revenue? Number of cups multiplied by the cost of cup. Focus on the numbers. 3 by 5 and 7 by 6. You know what number to focus on? The denominator 6 and 5. Alright? So, these are the key numbers. 3 by 5, 7 by 6. Right? So, let's do it. Small cups. Large cups. Have a look at this number. Three-fifths of the cups sold were small and rest were large. So, the total number of cups should be assumed as simply 5. What happens? If you assume the total number of cups as 5, now three-fifths of the total cups are nothing but small. So, three-fifths of 5 is nothing but a simple 3. So, large becomes 2. How simple? If the price of the large cups was 7 sixths as much that of small cups. So now this value is related to small cups price. So what to assume? 6. Small cups price. Let us say the price of small cup is 6 rupees. So 7 by 6 of small cup price? 7 rupees. How simple. Now revenue generated from small cups 18 rupees. 3 into 6. Large cups 2 7 to 14. What fraction of Tuesday's total revenue was from the sale of large cups? Large cups, sale is 14 rupees, total is 32 rupees. So 14 by 32, which is 7 by 16, and that's the answer. So the key is what number to assume and what to assume. The fraction will tell you. This was 3 fifth of the number of cups sold. So I assumed the number of cups sold to be 5. This was 7 sixths of the price of small cups. So I assumed 6 as the price of small cups. So that's it. And we have 7 by 16. And here we have option A. So guys, two questions cracked under one minute. And there you go. That's how you tackle GMAT. It's not just math. It's your aptitude. It's your utilization of the data and do some critical thinking. Assuming good values and getting to the answer very quickly. Thank you and we'll move to the next trap. Let's hack the GMAT quant.